So we start the webinar. Hello, everybody. Welcome to, to this webinar, Smart Competence Management Detecting Hidden Talents with a cloud-based tool. We have uh, two, two people from EMPO and also uh, Nargisa, the coordinator of the project uh, PROFIT, also from Dortmund, and EMPO also for, from Dortmund. And um, they will do this uh, webinar. So, Nargisa, the floor is yours. Welcome. Hello, everyone. Uh, so today we have our last uh, uh, tech talk, uh, also webinar uh, organized by APRO, partner of uh, Project Project. And uh, today we have an honor uh, and to represent two guests from partner company Ample Consulting. And we have uh, Andreas Franke, he's a managing director of Ample Consulting. And we have Anna Henta, uh, she's junior consultant uh, at Ample Consulting as well. So um, at Project, uh, Project for Digital Transformation, we came across uh, uh, through a very interesting case of managing uh, digital transformation through competences. And um, today, Empu will tell us how they help companies, uh, mostly small and medium sized enterprises in Germany, to tackle digital transformation with uh, competences and with the help of a cloud based tool. So um, I will give the word to Andres and Anna. So maybe you can tell us uh, shortly about the company, about the tool, uh, the cloud-based tool to manage competences. So we are very eager to know. Yeah, thank you, Nagisa, for the introduction and thank to the colleagues from AirPro for the invitation to the uh, to this uh, seminar or webinar. Uh, yeah, what we mainly do is that we uh, consult companies and organization. We're running programs for federal uh, ministries in, in Germany and also research projects. And in terms of consulting, you know, we focus on human technique and organization. It's, it's a little triangle that we will focus on. And it was, I think, 10 years ago that we were faced uh, uh, with a um, with a personal development tools, and mostly the companies in Germany in the what we call small and medium sized companies, uh, they had, don't really have tools. It's mo lots of paperwork and Excel sheets, a little bit of that, but so it was necessary to yeah to develop a new cloud based tool for us. That was about eight eight nine years ago. Uh, Ampul at itself, we we are market since 1992. Uh, the group locations are Dortmund, Düsseldorf, and Saarbrücken. Uh, I, uh, um, the the managing director of Dortmund, and uh, what we try to do is more uh, the business strategy, business coaching, digitalization, green transformation is now a very upcoming uh, topic, and also the competence management software. Uh, so that's the the. Uh, like my colleague uh, and and uh, Anna Henter will will talk about later on about the specific of these case studies that we try uh, we will introduce to you. Uh, so let's give you some overall information about the the context of this project. The training provider it was uh, organization in in Austria Westphalia has about three hundred employees. So it's little bit more it's a medium-sized company and they provide training uh, procedures training seminars for 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 their customers and uh, I remember that day when I came in and they had some you know excel sheets to 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 make their own uh, um, yeah, knowledge management in within the company and they were tried to stuck in and it didn't really work and I, I told him well we have some some kind of system that's interesting maybe you can use it and so we we got into the company it was kind of a funny opening but uh, it was the way it worked and uh, this consulting company now is running that software and what's 
maybe even more important that they um, next to the software they have a methodology now that they can uh, run their human resource project and and know what what are the 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 categories and the competence of the of the uh, employees within the company so that was a little bit the context of the the the, the project the case study that we were facing Nagisa asked us to 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 give some you know this case study for detecting hidden talents and to, to give it in a briefly context, the goals were that the taking the competence management to the next level away from Excel, uh, to make training measures even more efficient, to enable our quick response to customer re requests. It was very important for that company. And what they even didn't know was how to uncover these hidden talents. So they need some documents for the when they have to apply for 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 orders from from the official government, and the type of innovation that we were face, facing on was that that we have an organizational innovation. It was new for them, you know, to to think about how can we come up with a methodology, how can we measure competence, and how we, do we even uh, detect these competences that are needed within the company. So that. Uh, was a very interesting approach. But for a first introduction, I would hand over to Anna Henter that she can, um, yeah, uh, represent her by by herself and give some, you know, information. What was it? Because she was very deeply this in this project running. So Anna, maybe you can just give uh, some more comments on that. Thanks for the introduction and thanks for the invite. Um, yeah, um, when we started this project, I have been uh, uh, involved in that, so I just took over what others have started, and um, there was a pool of competences that had been um, worked out, but um, since our system is something that we uh, request the, um, the employees um, fill it out, please tell us if you have the competence, if you don't have the competence, on which level do you have that competence? And uh, when I started in this project, there were about 180 competences and we said, no, no employee in the whole wide world would sit there for hours and hours and telling us, is this, uh, do I know this? Do I, do I know a little bit of it? Do I, am I an expert in it? And um, so the first step was to shorten all that stuff and uh, to look at it from a point of view, like, what do we really want to know? It's not like, what can we all know? But what do, does this company really should know about the employees, about their competences? And so we shortened them to about 60 competences, which made the um, whole questionnaire really, really short. <laughs> and um, it is also the point where we as Ampool think about the people who should work with it. So that's that triangle, as Andrea said, um, we put the people, not, not first, but we think about them if they can cope with that um, system, with that method. So that was the first step to shorten all the competences. And um, then we made a concept how to go on with it because we really had to be um, a bit, yeah, a bit cautious with the employees because it's, oh my God, it's a cloud-based tool. Where do my uh, data go? What uh, what does the company want with all that information and stuff? And so we said, okay, we first write an email to all of them. There is something incoming and it's looking like that. And we uh, aim to this and so on and so forth. And then there was a next round telling the employees, here is a link, please follow that link, fill in the questionnaire. So that's a really nice and smooth and <laughs> cautious way to lead the people to fill in the questionnaire, to not be afraid of it and um, to open this, uh, to open up and to tell us what where their competences are because that's what the company wants. They want to be able to adapt to the market. And if they don't know the competences from their employees, they can't adapt to the market. Um, and as Andrea said, um, they worked with Excel sheets and you heard the number about 
300 employees that Excel sheet is <laughs> a bit explosive. And so um, our system was uh, that we, our system has a search button. So if there is an, a, um, a question from the market, please uh, do a training on whatever. So you can say, put the word in and you find all the expert in it. And the plus is when you find the experts, um, you can say, let's make an, in, in a workshop in the, for the company itself within, um, with employees from the company because you got your experts. You don't need to uh, buy in experts from out there to school all the employees uh, for the new subject that is coming. And uh, so that's the, the new cycle that the um, HR can do. Um, yes, so, um, and the next step, um, the, uh, the employee started to answer the questionnaire and um, we got the answers. And now it's like, yeah, we started the circle because uh, as always companies have, uh, uh, some employees stop working there, some new employees are coming, and the, the cycle started to um, ask the new ones and how to ask them and how to go on and forth with that um, competence management system. Uh, Anna, maybe yes. maybe mm -hmm. I, I uh, uh, show you, bring in some, one slide that, that, that gives you, an, an, um, you know, a, a picture of, of the steps that we will focus on. So you can just... I hope that will work. Okay, you see this? Mm -hmm. Okay, <laughs> so th those are these um, uh, steps that Anna mentioned uh, as we were coming in the company on an on a overall level. Now you see the steps. So, so the first thing was step one to determine the required competences on the basis of, in, in, in that case of digital process description. So, the, so we, we sat together and we said, what are the required competences within that company? And as Anna told, it was, I think it was 180 or something like that. So it was lots of competence and, and too complicated. But anyway, uh, we had to establish in the step two um, uh, comple completion uh, criteria and then a fine tuning of the profiles with, with all these people that were working in. And this is a remarkable difference. We are talking only with, a, not only with a human resource manager, manager uh, we were also talking to all these people that have the knowledge that have the different work in different departments. And that was funny because they had to, it was a new kind of new way of thinking to think what uh, are the competencies that are needed within the teams and the, in the different different departments. So we sit together and we were uh, talking about the profiles and then the next steps uh, were to do a run a self assessment. With, uh, within the company, so they get a, get a link, and everybody could, you know, focus on these competences. Uh, if I'm, we have, I think we have four categories. Uh, the one says no, no knowledge at all. That's easy. The next one was I make in German. It's a kenna. It says, oh, I'm, I'm, I know something about the competence, but I'm not really able to fulfill. Uh, the workload or the work contents that were, were that I'm forced to do so, so I need support. And the next step is uh, what we called a kenner, as uh, somebody who knows. Kenner, sorry, <laughs> the kenner. <laughs> uh, thank you, and and somebody who is able to you know fulfill the requirements of work on a hundred percent level, and uh, then we have the expert. And the expert is not only someone who has a very specific knowledge, he's also able to um, run training procedures. And this is quite important within the company that we focus these experts that uh, can run training procedures, uh, give the knowledge to, you know, to, the, to, the, to those that have may, maybe a low competence level. So that's in, within with the whole system. So, so if you know, what competences are needed. And if you have a, like a self-assessment, you can run an evaluation program, then you can come up with training programs to have some continuous improvement. That just uh, maybe this slide uh, gives a little bit an idea uh, what is the 
the whole the whole structure of of our um, yeah, procedure. Yeah, and um, adding to this is, um, of course, we uh, we looked what other competence management systems have, and they have different scales from five to seven to ten, and nobody knows what does this level mean. And that's why we said we got only four levels and then this explicit explanation, this is the one level, this is the second level and so on and so forth. So the people can really understand what the number, not numbers, but what the levels mean and what they can better think of. Um, do I know this? Do I know something about it? Or is it a more a two or more a three? And so um, it is easier for the people to fill out the questionnaire and it is easier for the, um, for the Führungskraft. For the management. Uh, management. For, for, the, for the management, <laughs> yeah. thanks for the help. Uh, for the management um, to see where the people are at with their competences. And that's uh, that would be a, a new cycle to add to it. Um, that we ask the management to look over what the employees answered in their questionnaire, because maybe there are people who said, oh, I don't know, really not sure. And then the management says, but I see your work, you're good at it. I said you are a kenner. And um, so there is uh, something like we push people to talk to each other about the competences and think about them. and raise them up if they are, are pretty low in self-esteem. Yeah, it's also very interesting that uh, you manage this tool uh, to create kind of like a competence profile of the whole organization, right? And it yeah. seems like it, this tool sounds to me really like uh, interactive because I wouldn't mm. be motivated to put my information just in the Excel file. It's so... Um, I cannot even touch it kind of, you know, then I, I think if, if the tool is like something which is motivating and it's interactive enough to put the information there, and I know that there is a certain use out of it. Yeah, like as you mentioned, there is like a certain internal evaluation of my competences, there is external one, like for example, my supervisor, or, um, he could or she, they could know where am I from their expertise? So I'm actually very curious, and I think our uh, participants of the webinar are also interested to maybe to see how actually the tool looks like. Uh, maybe um, there's a chance to show like a demo or something. Okay. So I will try to manage that. Maybe, Anna, you can give some <laughs> additional comments um... while I'm... <laughs> Yeah, of course, um, um, this competence management system is a living tool since you can add your com new competences to it. You can say, ah, this competence is not necessary anymore. I flip that out. Mm -hmm. And um, so, um, yeah, you can change it whenever you want and um, get the um, if someone filled in the questionnaires, you can really see on point that this is new and um, this adds to all the, the stuff so you don't need to wait like I'm sending the questionnaire via paper to all the employees and they have to cross in and cross out and stuff like that so um, yeah it's it's a living tool yeah here I think you can see it just give me a thumb yeah yeah it's working thank you <laughs> <laughs> so that's just a very um yeah, the, the, the tool, uh, Squire, we can so called. Uh, there's a dashboard. I talked to that point of uh, thing a little later on, just to, to give you this this idea. Just okay now, um, that we have diff different uh, questionnaire times running. This was 2019, 22. This is a demo, and it says like if you can open your project. And this is, uh, of course, this is in German. We don't have an English version right now, uh, but it says customer services, so that's easy. And Indo sales, so we're a little little uh, international. So that says that that you have your organization set up. Uh, like like uh, customer service end of sales and you have to organize uh, employers to this these those are acronymous uh, data and uh, they see these ones have fulfilled their questionnaire also so, so you can have an overview about your 
different departments and and uh, sorry i uh, just uh, like a lot of customer service we have six employees and in that case we don't have a competence profile so far so i'm going to check this is an empty uh, so we go for oh i have to check another project i think Okay, so this is this may be open. I have to so the the, the competence profile I have to uh, to check in another um, demo, uh, which is which is an organized right here. So let's see if we have here some. Oh, it doesn't work here. Okay, sorry for that. I wasn't prepared. I'll just look for another one, which gives you more some more information. Just a minute. Okay. Okay, let me take this one. That should work. Okay. So coming back. Okay, now we we back. It's it's a different demo. Uh, like uh, we, we made this for a transformation uh, organization that goes for more green competences. So you see this. The, those are now different departments like Einkauf, um, uh, order management, marketing, and so on. Uh, as I showed you, those are the employers. And here's a, the idea of a competence profile. You can just unclap it here and you see those are different competences and what is um uh, since i it's in german i have to translate like uh, it's so called um uh, team to work in a team the, the ability to work in a team and and this is very important those are specific cate categories that uh, de that describes what if you talk about team collaboration ability, uh, what is is this meant and, and defined within the company? If if you talk about team ability, because you have lots of association numbers, and and this is one something that we were discussing with the customers, and uh, those are then if you have come up with the profile you can now run into a yeah like an um, questionnaire uh as here you see this those are the competences and here you see this yeah, specific um description of the competence and now somebody has um give her own assessment it says i do i am i'm an expert do I have no knowledge and so on and do i have a wish or motivation to to run go into a training procedure so that's on this on this side and you can send this questionnaire in links uh, with a link to to every uh, employer within the company and uh, coming back if this is done then the next step would be to have like uh, um, um, uh, an evaluation of if the self-assessment is done, you can now have an evaluation of the results. And this one says, oh, here's uh, somebody who knows this is red, so there's no knowledge. And you see, oh, only two competences. But anyway, it says we have no expert. We have nobody that is able to fulfill the company. I have only one uh, that knows a little bit. And here's somebody that owes nothing at all, but as a motivation of, of, of training procedure. So that gives you a hint who is on which competence level and who is motivated to, you know, to, to go into more training procedure to enhance their competence level. So you, you, you can run this for every uh, uh, department or also for processes within the company and uh, you you can see it on an overall level like if you go for uh, for the whole um, uh, operation company you see like you have every um, results from a to c a to Z, that to to every competence you see all this expert all these kernels and canners and the motivation of company and uh, you, you 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 can see also if somebody is ill for a longer time and you have a 
you know, maybe in that case, an, a demand of, of work um, load that has to be fulfilled. M maybe there's somebody else who can, you know, is maybe an, a, an expert. Like if you go in this, you see, oh, there are three experts and I can identify those experts that I may be able to, to fulfill it and uh, work maybe on a different place. So that's um, the analytical part of it. And the, the, what you also can do if like if you look like the demand of training procedures, it's like a one to ten list. It says, oh, here. I have um, people that knows a little, nothing or a little bit are highly motivated for more training procedures. And you see though, those are maybe uh, the, the, the short list on, on those topics that are highly demanded in, within the companies. And you can come up then with training procedures. It says here, different um, seminars where you can also order your, your uh, the, the, the clients or the, the, the employers uh, to different training procedures. So that's, that, that's okay. Uh, just to, to, to step in there. Uh, go ahead. Um, uh, the company uh, was also uh, thinking about how can we make our, um, the trainings for our employees uh, more efficient. Because um, as we all know, when there is a company and they do a training, that the, the department of sales all have to go there to the training, even if they know nothing about the topic, even if they are experts on the topic, all are sent because it's a department thing. But um, with, in this case, you can see, are there experts already? Can they school our employees or can't they? And um, yeah, you can just school the people who need the new knowledge, but um, you also say, ah, that's not just 20 people we have to pay for, it's maybe just five. Yeah. Or we would do it uh, something as uh, we do it with an expert on our team that uh, talks to the team and gives the knowledge. But um, so you can make uh, all that training stuff really more efficient. So so what we also do is like if you go from questionnaire what is needed to the self-assessment to evaluation and training procedure is uh, so i have to come back to this uh to the slide here i'm not quite sure if you see the slide right now or the we do it we do see oh, it. okay thank you it's like it's this is more on a you know on an overall level it's like a dashboard that you can see if you do a questionnaire in 2019 at that case and you run it again in 2020 so you see the blue ones uh, the experts are hired up so that's uh, quite interesting for you know have a, a for, um, every year uh, measurement uh, for uh, with, uh, which you can supply in in in, uh, in Squire that you see oh i have an enhancement uh, improvement of experts and also for kerner and you see how your training procedures work you know and we also have a little quality management of, of these training procedure within it but on an on an uh, um, level like a hr department can now measure how um how efficient are the training procedures and can you if you run the self-assessment again you see the differences and you also can maybe see oh we have to work on in specific fields uh, fields again so nagisa this is a we don't want to talk <laughs> too much <laughs> You can just yeah. interrupt us if, if it's, um, but this is a little demo and a little introduction uh, within the tool. We make it on now on a cloud basis. We have some some customers that are uh, quite, you know, happy that that we uh, run the system and on, on on a server cloud basis. Some have this. Um, on their own um, uh, IT resource program running, but uh, uh, the cloud program is uh, the cloud service is uh, even more sufficient for them. Um, okay. yeah, yeah. For Thank them. you for this spontaneous demo. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I was actually interested. So you know, one of the benefits you already mentioned that it helps to approach the training needs more effectively because then you can really invite and promote people for the training who really need, need this. Um, but also the title of this webinar is saying about like detecting hidden talents. Yeah. So 
why those talents uh, were kind of like hidden for the company, right? So particularly this case of this big German company. And uh, did they actually initially wanted to approach the whole digital transformation with uh, competence management? And uh, yeah, maybe you can elaborate like why those were like kind of like hidden. <laughs> Okay. Um, there, we, get, we went on two ways because um, in that special case, um, the company was also interested in the qualifications of the employees. And so the HR went all to the all through the application data and uh, put in this data. And um, there also uh, was a huge amount of competences that have never been mentioned because it was in the application file and you look at it, you... <laughs> Do the app for you, or don't you, um, you employ the people, or you don't, but you never look at it again. And so, some uh, yeah, hidden talents were already there, but nobody noticed. And uh, they went into the into the software. Uh, that was the first way. And the second way was um, that we um, said, if you have uh, a qualification like I can do first aid, like something like that. Um, that wasn't questioned before, but now you can say if that's a ta talent, a competence you have, and uh, like Datenschutzbeauftragte or something like that, or even uh, we left an open, uh, um, an open competence like, do you know something that we didn't ask before? Have you got a competence that you think is maybe helpful? Um, uh, let's say. I do. I do like. Uh, um, I do like taking photos. It's just simple as that. But the, uh, if you got uh, a, a guy, a girl, whatever, uh, in in your company that uh, is good at pho uh, photo shooting, um, you can use it for um, social media. Perhaps you can use it for um, for for the website, of course, for for marketing. And um, if you hadn't asked uh, what kind of other talents do you have, you wouldn't have noticed. And you can use so many talents of the people, like what are they doing on their hobby side? What are they interested in? There may be some people who are interested in history, but you don't even know because they never ask to, are you interested in history? But in this uh, training company, you maybe start a, start a seminar about it. Why not? Yeah, we, we also had this hidden competences that was all called mm -hmm. so kind of interesting in an IT company. You know, they were having demand on different programming, uh, like uh, whatever, C, C plus or Java or whatever. So and, and we were asking the people and said, well, I do have experience in that and that programming style. And they said, oh, that's interesting. So we were coming up with a, a category that was called uh, hidden competences. So and, and they were discussing, oh, yes, uh, OK, if the company gives me some more training experience, we could, you know, enhance this knowledge in that specific field. Or maybe I could run some project that was, I didn't know that. I, I'm, not, I'm not quite sure how often I heard this sentence. I didn't know that. Or on the other thing that was just in the beginning, it was like six, six, seven years ago in an industrial company, we were talking with the workers on the work floor. Yeah, they would do some, you know, in a, for the for the um, automobile industry. And uh, there was, a, from, from I think it was for Ukraine, there was a woman that was, she was working as a translator already. And the way, just you, looking for somebody who can do some translation work because it was a delegation from Ukraine coming and was, oh, wow, now we have somebody uh, that is already uh, educated. You know, this, this is, uh, I have some data within my company and I, I, I'm not quite sure, I'm not, I have an overview. Where are these hidden talents, these hidden competences? So that makes it more clear on that level if you use it. So that was the one side of 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 hidden talents and also uh once you look identify expert within your company that are willing to to know like the let's say i'm now a little bit older but i maybe i do have some expert knowledge in some specific field uh so i was maybe question us would you like to to run some programs in that in that case and we 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 found those people the in the let's say a little plus 50 
generation that said project management. I were running so many projects within my life. So they give give some, you know, um, some training um, procedures about project management. And it's good for them because, you know, it was kind of, you know, uh, feeling good, be, being recognized within the company and not like overwhelmed by the digital nerds <laughs> that were coming in the company and all these, you know, so that it makes also give some some more you know good feeling uh, wellness uh, within the company for for you know for, for more identif identification for all these people so so it's a little bit of hidden competence hidden uh hidden talents and the next step would be requirement no i mean if you like you 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 have uh, uh to require people for for uh, from, from the outside we have a, in germany we call it a fachkräftemangel uh so we have uh, we have to look for new um employees and they are kind of hard to find maybe how is it in spain do you have mm -hmm. a lack of or is it is it the employment uh, unemployment rate also in Spain, even that high that I was noticed five years ago, is is, is there a lack of people that were looking for, for the, the, the companies that they find these employees that they needed? Mm, yeah, somehow, because, um, well, the rate, uh, the unemployment rate is it's quite high. Yeah. And also, well, the qualified people that uh, it's needed. There are many, well, here, at least in Bilbao, it's an industrial part and many companies, they, they are arriving here, mm -hmm. international. So these new skills like digital, well, digital transformation skills, um, English, even English language. Um, the English is not so, well, now it's getting popular, more and more used here, but before Spanish people didn't, didn't speak so well English, maybe French, <laughs> because of the, yeah. <laughs> France is it's just very near from here, one hour far from Bilbao. So, well, these new skills, they, it's, it's like a movement and challenging and yeah, but okay. it's, it's moving everywhere. And, yeah. But it's quite interesting your 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 program and how you are managing. I'm really really surprised. Yeah, maybe very, some. Very... Oh, excuse me. No. Uh, so to what, just one comment on on how you can good um, run your job and if you look for new personnel in your company, like handcraft. Is very you know is, uh, no branches in Germany they were looking so hard for new people to come in because you know some more go for for higher educated uh, ways for more for more bachelor master programs then instead of uh, 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 what do we say is it assistantship I think assistantship and uh, like like go for you know handcraft assistantship so they. What we notice is if you're using those tools, you can also give the people that were coming in like an idea how would you as a company owner develop these people. If you have some idea of competence profile and, and, and if you were higher up this level from somebody who is, has no knowledge to, to an expert, so you give an idea and then it is it's more and more uh, needed uh, within the companies because uh, they said to me uh, there isn't somebody who sits on the other side of the table and he said okay uh, manager how would you like to develop me and <laughs> in most of the cases they don't really have an answer for that so if you have a competence profile within the branches you can see oh those are a competence profile those are the training procedures and that's also maybe you can combine it with an in a career system Especially mm -hmm. for the IT companies in Germany, mm -hmm. they they are very highly uh, uh, yeah, uh, qualified for this uh, kind of. Uh, this is a really run on everybody who, who is, has a little Java or C plus plus or whatever competence. Yeah. So so have an idea. Oh, yeah. okay. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, I, I was actually thinking about how you are addressing sustainability in in, in terms like, uh, for example, I put my profile. I described uh, hidden talents or like in general all the competences I would have, and. Um, who would have access to it? Should I update my profile every two, three months? How you address this kind of like using and reusing this competence information in the company? 
Um, that's up to the company itself, because uh, some companies work really fast, like IT companies. Um, our company that's, uh, that we talked about in this case, um, I think he, they are going to run it every year because um, it didn't, won't make any sense to them to do it uh, like every three months. But um, it's nothing we say you have to do. Not no, we are just we are just consultants. So we just ask the people, what do you really need? Do you rerun it in every year? Um, do you run it in different uh, different time cycles within the different departments? You can do all that, and it's up to you what you need, what you are, what you want to ask your people of. Because yeah, it's. Uh, it's a bit of time you ask the employees to answer that questionnaire. They could do other stuff while we're not doing that. So um, it's up to the companies if, if they want to have a yearly cycle or just or every five years. I don't know if that's a thing for companies, but they could choose on their own. And so. did you face any challenges that people are not really open to to talk about their competences or like maybe they don't want to share that they are good at photo shooting for example because i don't know <laughs> do you have an example of kind of uh, this a bit hesitation of people's side because it's kind of like a bit of personal information and you know there's all these data privacy issues yeah it's uh, it's i'm uh, sorry Anna, um uh, i since I didn't ask the employees because uh, I got the HR who asked the employees, I have not not that uh, um, example, but um, he told me later on that there were issues from the people and he asked, what are your issues? Why don't you fill it in? I ask you three times and that's the normal thing to do. I ask all my employees three times to do it because it maybe have been forgotten in the meantime. And um, they said, yeah, I... I asked security and stuff. That was one point, but not the overall point. Um, some people say they uh, they couldn't deal with a technique, which I said um, our system is pretty easy to do. You have seen the uh, the things; it's pretty easy to fill out. But they said they had technical issues. Others said they didn't have the time, and um, others said uh, I. <laughs> I um like it was it was it still was too long for them to fill it out and they they lost the track somewhere between and didn't finish it so um yeah but um I I was glad that he told me all those issues because then we can work with that because can we make it much more easier if the people say it, they had technical problems is there a way to make it more easier um, if there is something like, I'm afraid what you do with my data, how can we work with that? Um, because that, that feedback was really nice and helpful for us and for the HR too, because it's their um, way of asking the people and they should talk to the people what they are doing with their data. Uh, maybe mm -hmm. as an, uh, uh, so some more comments on that, uh, how people react to the interview and are they, uh, we, I think we were running about a thousand interviews within the last eight years. So, wow. and recording to that, that was, um, I would say was, is, is about, let's say two to 3% that people didn't want to fulfill the questionnaire. Uh, there was maybe because our approach is, um, uh, very on participation oriented yeah, that we did. And, and this is communication so that needs that the HR department that the people from the different departments speak to their people why are we doing this so that's very important uh, to have a highly accepted uh, process running that people like to fulfill the questionnaire and have no not really a problem with that uh, in order you have to to meet these data requirements uh, security requirements but on the other hand i would say in the organization it's also important that you include the unions if you have them like in germany if you have about 100 and 150 employees i think you have a um, uh, we call it an interessensvertretung uh, it's like a what is it a department of 
I don't know, the Betriebs, der Betriebsrat. Yeah. <laughs> Those who are protecting What the rights it? of employees. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know that they're, they're taking uh, part of the of the interests of the employers, so they have to you have to to include them in the system, and that that works then on that kind of And people need also some kind of reflection. If you fulfill the, the questionnaire, you need some kind of action afterwards. And if you include them into um, um, into a training program, so that's it's a good fitting, and it gives you some some reaction, and they they understand it. So. That's, to that experience, our experience, that I would, I would really, it's, it's, no, it's maybe one to two, three percent. Yeah. So it's Not basically much. people just need to know what is yeah. behind it. Uh, why should I do it? So it, just to extend the level of transparency, basically. Yeah. yeah to yeah. then yeah. you will get a, a enhanced level of trust, basically. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, it's very nice that actually the customers uh, they give you feedback because. Based on this feedback, you can grow, you can improve your tool, right? And um, do you have some strategy? Do you see a potential development of your tool? You know, the, now it's everything, artificial intelligence is a really high trend, <laughs> big trend. <laughs> But what is actually there for your Squire tool in future? Yes, actually, we, we just discussed this morning about an a new way to interpret it or our or, or tool maybe in, in, in the direction of you know to 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 have some uh, analyzed tools for for uh, was it a wettbewerb that says uh, customer uh, analysis uh, so so different approaches do we need in different branches different uh, competences so and also for the as i told the ecological transformation the green transformation we have uh, their uh, specific competences so you can use this methodology and you you can uh, you can run these programs in, in, with, which is kind of new so we inter we have to, to come up with new competences in that kind of field so that's the improvement also would say like we have a dashboard i didn't show you to that that, that, that combines all the data which which is Uh, like if you have an uh, over um, if you analyze about over more years like two three years you can if come up from from one uh, one employer have with a different um, 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 uh, competence to a certain training program you can identify all this kind of data this is it's a simple a power bi dashboard that's on the on the dashboard and we can uh, Uh, how to say the dashboard can be defined by the by the requirements of the customer. So you kind of reflect dynamic nature of companies yeah. because yeah. you can acquire a new one, you can lose the one you already had before. Yeah. And yeah, I was actually also uh, eager to ask and to know basically if I'm like good in photo shooting and then I'm a good, I don't know, programmer and maybe then uh maybe i have uh, then if i connect those two nodes of my different like profiles then maybe them are also good and ux ue design probably i don't know <laughs> but mm -hmm. i think this is actually would be also kind of interesting aspect to consider and see where there is some uh, level of prediction that there is a hidden competence which also the person who filled it out he or they don't know it by themselves yeah. yet you know yeah. yeah that's a great idea oh. <laughs> just thought about because you mentioned ai um if uh we should ask ai to fill in the descriptions of the competences and the values but i think please don't because um We need the people to dis discuss the competences and we need the people to discuss their values to find their um, their all of their point um, for the company, not just for the uh, for the uh, several in individuals. And um, as you know, competences have their own way of speaking, their own speech, and you need to find that speech to describe the competences. And I think an AI can't do that. Yeah, and it's important that the person is reflecting, right? And, yeah. and I'm thinking, okay, this competence is very important for my career and future. And then I realize that I'm not expert there yet. So I should do something because then maybe I see myself an expert there like in yeah. two years. 
And then with this help, help of this uh, tool like yours one, then I could see, okay, now I need to uh, move in this direction. Yeah. Right. Yeah. As I told before, like we have an IT company, they were combining Squire with a business career model. As you said, like an expert has maybe a different, like a senior or whatever consultants level. And if you go those steps, it's you, know, you can you can use it at, at that way if you want to. Nice. Even if you want, you can do like the competences. Uh, this is basic level. This is um, uh, the expert level, and make different descriptions. So the people, as you uh, as you said that, I just want to. Uh, spread it out that um, you can ask them do you have that on a basic level or do you have that on a expert level and so the people can read those description and say ah this is the way I have to go in this company this is what they think is an expert hmm. so because um, some people say yeah we want basic skills in excel what does that mean yeah. I can open up excel and I can <laughs> close it and I can <laughs> fill in stuff or does basic uh, uh, basic skill main I can do um, I can make it beautiful <laughs> or does uh, does basic skill mean I can fill in some uh, some algorithms what is basic skill mean and uh, with our way of our method you can fill that out and say this is what we use uh, we say as basic level this is what we wanted to do as an expert and then you can go when you want to be an expert go there, ask your manager, uh, can I please have a seminar about this or that? Because I want to be that expert there. Yeah, this is what you mean, particularly by the speech of the competence, right? Because yeah. mm. from company to company, it will be different based on the culture of the company, right? This the whole yeah. setting, which is pretty complex, right? Yeah. yeah. Nice. It was very interesting insights. I got it from my side. It was very nice. Uh, but I think we have like um, also some guests uh, who would also probably have questions. So I will open now the podium to question to ask questions. Uh, Andreas and Anna, maybe you wanted to ask something. Please use the chance. Hello, can everybody hear me? Yeah, hi, Danny. Hello. Hi, Danny. <laughs> Familiar faces. <laughs> yeah. I was already aware of your tool, uh, already convinced about uh, the properties that it has uh, in terms of the BIM context. Ah. Um, is it working already in an international context? Because five minutes ago when I checked, it was not. Ah, you mean the this, this is something different? Uh, you mean the BIM Comp app, uh, right? This is uh, like an easier approach uh, it's now uh, not the time to to uh, explain it all now the bim uh, the international way uh, we have the test flight from 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 apple and from ios uh, coming in i think two days ago and we still work on it denny i will i will uh, send you and at that point when it's there <laughs> just the email at that time and then you can try to you know we we're still in it it's a little bit complicated, but I think it will be fulfilled by the next weeks. I, I give you an, uh, an hint. That's perfect. <laughs> uh, actually, uh, just for for this is uh, for for Danny, we have la, uh, we have we're running the BIM Comp app for seven architects last for for two weeks. Uh, we're coming into the container for BIM, and it was kind of funny to see how low the competences were for BIM definition and BIM all these BIM competences were coming up. So, but they were very honest and said, "Okay." This is uh, so that's an approach for it's it's uh, the methods by an app, and you can just say uh, how is my knowledge, and then you go through and and you you give what we call some some simple training nuggets. Um, I can maybe with the presentation, Nagisa, like I can uh, give you some the, the 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 code for for the app, so you can download it if it's international. <laughs> <laughs> so that should be in two weeks. I was translating in the chat that BIM is building information modeling just for yeah. other guests. Thanks for that help. Yeah. 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 <laughs> okay. Thanks. Yeah. So, um, 
All right, so maybe we have some other questions. We have some other guests, Metin, Ruben Martinez, Sergio Martin. Uh, maybe April, they have questions, so feel free. something in the chat i think oh. okay thank you ruben oh, okay <laughs> <laughs> okay so, so it was very insightful i believe so maybe i'm doing my phd on competence topic i like it a lot and oh. just <laughs> um side note i did my master thesis also with ample it was very interesting to dive into this digital transformation issues and how you can approach with competences uh, because it's very vulnerable topic uh, with all these new tools it's already highlighted uh, was highlighted by Andreas so I've, thank you very much for your time um, you're welcome so yeah I think we can release people for the weekend <laughs> yeah nice and, weekend yeah thank you thanks and, for listening thank you bye bye bye